Hello, my awesome PMP warriors. Welcome to 40 days to PMP exam success, day 27. Day 27, we're going into domain two, task 13, and it's called determine appropriate project methodology, methods and practices. The very first enabler simply states, assess project needs, complexity and magnitude. The second enabler, recommend project execution strategy, that is contracting, finance and so on, and then recommend a project methodology that is predictive, agile, hybrid, and so on. And lastly, use iterative incremental practices throughout the project life cycle. That is lessons learned, stakeholder engagement, risk, all that stuff in the agile practice guide from pages 90 to 95 transformed into the world of agile and everything from pages 50 to around 56. You gotta make sure you understand that stuff in the context of Agile. Let's jump into our open-ended questions for day 27. I've got about 17 questions and I've got certain pages that I want you to pay close attention to in the Agile Practice Guide. Please do that and always remember those Sundays where we have the PMP exam immersion, you can cover all 35 tasks with me in just half a day. Now let's get into our multiple choice questions for today. You're a project manager working on developing a new high-tech product followed by a rollout and training to thousands of users. Considering the uncertainty, complexity, and risk in the development portion of the project, you applied an agile approach followed by a defined repeatable rollout and training phase in a predictive way. This is an example of what? Hit the pause button if you need more time. You know the drill. All right. Three, two, and one. I will reveal the answer. The answer to this is not scaled agile or disciplined agile, and it's not an incremental life cycle. This is, in fact, a hybrid. Projects often combine elements of different life cycles to give a hybrid approach. Make sure you hit pages 26, 27, 28 in the Agile Practice Guide. It's going to help you on this one, okay? Next question. You're a project manager on a 10-story building project. To reduce potential rework and ensure expectations, the customer asks you to deliver a finished floor of the building before they continue with the remainder of the building. You have been asked to complete a floor with fixtures, paint, and everything else intended for the finished floor before proceeding to the next floor. The customer is able to see and approve the style, color, and other details, allowing adjustments to be made before further investments of time and money are made. This is an example of what? I know it's a long one, so I'll give you time to think about it. All right, my friends, I believe that is enough time. The answer to this is not A, and it's not B or D. The answer to this is incremental. This is described in the Agile Practice Guide on page 23, and you can see the example on page 23 is exactly what this question is about. Providing a customer a single feature or a finished piece of work is an example of the incremental approach, and it gives you a very lengthy example which was replicated in the question let's move on to the next one number 75 which of the following life cycles may take longer because they are optimized for learning rather than speed of delivery All right, three, two, and one. The best answer, my friends, to this is iterative B. Iterative life cycles may take longer because they are optimized for learning rather than speed. Agile Practice Guide, page 21. 
Let's move on to our next question. Which of the following activities do you need to perform incrementally and iteratively in a predictive, that is, traditional project? Hit that pause button if you need more time. Three, two, and one. Now, one of the hallmarks of PMP questions is they are right there in your face. You almost want to argue that there must be at least two of these that are correct. And I'm guessing some of you have gone for option C and some of you have gone for option A. And some of you might have even gone for option B more than C. But I want to tell you this, in traditional, predictive, B, C, and D are not guaranteed because on many a project, it is fixed, fixed, fixed. However, what is not fixed is what you cannot control, and that is uncertainty. And the best answer to this, my friends, is A. It's risk analysis. High variability environments, by definition, incur more uncertainty and risk to address this Projects managed using adaptive approaches make use of frequent reviews of incremental work products and cross-functional project teams to accelerate knowledge, sharing, and ensure that risk is understood and managed. Risk is considered when selecting the content of each iteration. So think about it. You address the risk when you are delivering an increment and you address the risk when you are starting each iteration and all through. That's why we have spikes. And that's why that's the answer, my friends. I know it's rough. But that's how they roll. Number 77. All of the following are criteria for recommending a project methodology or approach that is predictive, agile, hybrid, except. I'll give you time on this one. All right. Hit the pause button if you need more time. Now, my friends, the answer to this one is revealed on page 126 of the Agile Practice Guide. In fact, you should read 123 all the way through to the end of the whole narrative. And 127 as well, and know what that image looks like. So the answer to this is not A, it's not B, it's not C, it's D. It's risk again. And it's risk because risk actually falls under the category of project. So we have the culture category, the team category of questions, and the project category of questions. And if you haven't already done that, I highly recommend that you go through those Agile Radar questions. The Agile Radar chart has got questions that go with it. Know what the questions mean and know the mindset behind the Agile Radar is not to robotically introduce Agile or hybrid approaches or even predictive, but it is to have a discussion, a dialogue and to ensure that the data points are congruent with what is happening in the firm so that you can make your way forward as far as what Agile means to you in the firm. Let's go to our next one. Next one, number 78. The evolution of a product from concept through delivery, growth, maturity, and to retirement is referred to as what? All right, let's go ahead and end this poll and let's take a look at the results. Three, two, and one. The answer, my friends, to this is product life cycle. Project life cycles are independent of product life cycles, which may be produced by a project. A product life cycle is the series of phases that represent the evolution of a product from concept through delivery, growth, maturity to retirement obsolescence and ultimate disposal of the system. That's it, my friends. I hope you found these questions to be helpful. Next, let's jump on the road, talk about this in more detail.
if I was going to retitle this, I would title it page 14, Agile Practice Guide, page 18, Agile Practice Guide, page 19. That's what I would title it. And you might wonder, why would I title it that? Because those pages give a really nice idea of everything that we're going to be talking about today. So it starts off with an understanding of what this task really wants you to know. What does this task want you to know? It wants you to know that not every project can be predictive. Not every project should be predictive. Not every project should be agile. You might find instances where you may need to lean a little bit more to the world of agile than predictive or the world of predictive than agile, but you could be in a hybrid happy medium, to be honest. And that is really what this is talking about. Okay, so it starts off saying, determine the appropriate methodology for the project, or maybe it's a group of methods for the project, or maybe it's some practices as well. Whatever the combination, you need to determine what that will look like. Now, the first enabler says, assess project needs. Assess project complexity. And assess the project magnitude. So three things. The needs, how complex it is, and how big the breadth of the project. Once you determine things like this, you identify that your project needs an incremental approach. Because the stakeholders they want whatever you're developing as soon as possible. Maybe their business depends on it, right? What about complexity? Maybe the project you're working on has very little direction as far as the requirements and the technicality. In other words, you are so far from agreement in terms of the technicality to run the project, and you're also far from agreement in terms of the requirements for the project. You know you need to work on something, but what you need to work on is not as secure and firmed up. So it is in the complex space. And then the magnitude, if you're working on something that is enormous, really far-reaching, impacting a lot of lives, then your disposition might be to be a little bit more predictive. See where that's going? The second enabler says, recommend project execution strategy, for example, finance and contracting. Now this is just saying, determine how you will fund the project, determine how the solution of the project will be delivered. Is there going to be contracting involved? If so, what does that look like? And thoughts such as that. The next enabler says, recommend a project methodology. Watch this or approach. Now the word methodology, it's very finite. When we say methodology, we've got all of these practices and approaches that are meant to be done together in a more procedural way. But when we say approach, it could mean a framework as well. It could mean a collection of just various practices. So it could be a rather custom solution to managing the project, okay? So it says, recommend a project methodology or approach that is predictive, agile, hybrid. You as the project manager, you need to be able to recommend what to do, you know? Based on your knowledge, based on your experience, what do you recommend? That is the question, see? So sometimes it takes having a fair amount of experience to know whether an agile approach would do better. You know, case in point, the virtual case file project is a good example of how the FBI try to use a predictive method to work this project. They failed. It was not until they used an agile approach that they were able to succeed. So hundreds of millions 
of taxpayer dollars later, they discovered, oh, we should probably be using a more agile approach, and that's how they succeeded. All right, and the next one says, use iterative incremental practices throughout the project life cycle. That is lessons learned, stakeholder engagement, and risk. So all they're saying is, where possible, where necessary, deliver incrementally, but plan in iterations. That's all it's saying. All right, so you can plan in iterations, you can execute in iterations, and you can deliver in increments. Because you do know, if you take a look at page 18 and 19 in the Agile Practice Guide, what you're going to realize really quick is that an iterative approach does not necessarily mean that you are delivering in increments. You do know that there is a difference between iterative and incremental. Iterative means you are repeating things until they are correct. It does not necessarily mean that you are delivering in pieces, you see? Iterative means you are repeating until correct and you are delivering one time. That's an iterative life cycle. An incremental life cycle means you are delivering multiple times. So you do need to know these definitions really well for your exam, okay? If you're not familiar with them, I would recommend that you do get familiar with them, okay? Incremental is a single delivery. Uh, I beg your pardon, incremental is a multiple delivery, frequent smaller deliveries, and iterative is a one-time delivery, okay? Iterative, one-time delivery, incremental, frequent smaller deliveries. So you need to be able to distinguish between these two. Now, on top of that, when we talk about the aspect of doing things in iterations, we could talk about lessons learned being done at the end of every iteration. You know, we call that a retrospective in the world of Agile, right? So where possible, break down your lessons learned into iterations. Where possible, address stakeholder engagement in iterations, different stakeholders for different iterations, different levels of engagement for different iterations. And that's how you need to also approach the topic of risk, you know? So approach the topic of risk in iterations as well. You know, processing the information in chunks, not all at once. See? And that's the general idea. Doing things in iterations and also delivering in increments. So they are encouraging you to use iterative and incremental practices throughout the project. Okay. wherever you find the opportunity. Doing things in increments helps you to deal with complexity. It is also a risk coping mechanism. Doing things in bite-sized chunks, I mean, it's common sense. You know, the saying goes, how do you eat an elephant? It's a bite at a time. How do you address a big, hairy, audacious goal? A bite at a time. How do you address complexity? A bite at a time. Okay, so that's a general mindset. I ju just want to stress one more time, really take a look at page 14 in the Agile Practice Guide for the Stacy complexity model. Remember, you've got the simple zone where you do predictive type projects. You've got the complex zone where you're tending, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit towards Agile some more. And uh, you also have somewhere in the middle, you've got the complicated zone where a hybrid mindset is not a bad one to have. You know? But just be aware that complicated does not mean the same as complex. <coughs> Excuse me. Complicated could mean there are many moving parts. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a lot of intricacy. <coughs> My voice is gone. But um, complex just means <coughs> The end goal is not as clear, okay? Got a coughing bout for a few seconds, excuse that. But when you take a look at the Stacy model, really apply yourself to understand the difference between complicated, many moving parts, many steps, sort of intricacy, 
versus complex, which could mean no clarity or not enough clarity about where you're going. Not enough clarity regarding maybe the vision, maybe the ultimate destination. See, that's what makes things complex. When the requirements are not clearly understood and when the technicality, how you're going to do what you want to do, is not very well understood. Okay? I hope you found this to be useful. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Share with your friends if you know of anyone getting ready for the exam that has a bottleneck. And remember that we have a plethora of content in other places. So if you are getting ready for this exam and you don't have a coach, you don't have a trainer, you don't have a mentor, someone who is shepherding you through the process, you need to go on down to hpmexam.com because that's your one-stop shop to get a boatload of stuff. hpmexam.com, you can sign up for half-day bootcamp. You can get our 600-page book, 200-page handout, just tons and tons of stuff that you see on the screen. All right, so go on down there and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.